Welcome. Yes, good morning. I'm Michael McClure and this is Kamala Devi. And we are doing our part, we figured out this is the um, third of a four part series um, as a relationship upgrade. And it's also a preview to our upcoming deep dive, which is a high level mastermind for um, hopefully a dozen couples or so that want to go deep throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the topic we're going to be covering today is rituals and how important those rituals have been to our relationship. Um, and we're realizing how important they are for going into the deeper levels of, of relationship. Yeah. Yeah, it was just um, Valentine's and that's our 17th anniversary. And we were just reflecting on how for a lot of couples, it's like, that's the big ritual of the year, you know, whether it's an anniversary or it's um, Valentine's or, but they're really like these seldom little, seldom ex occasions, these special celebrations. And this theme we thought of ever making everyday Valentine's is like, what, what makes Valentine's special? And part of it is, you know, it's like, you've got all the, the special preparation and the, and the multi-sensory experience of, you know, gifting and affirmations and, and, you know, all levels. And we're thinking how to bring that into every day to make every day special. And we met at a ritual, which was a puja, a tantric puja, 17 years ago. So it was, we, we started in ritual and what Kamala Devi's talking about is these, the celebration rituals too, which are, are really, you know, really a critical part as well, but there's more. Um, and my, what I've come to realize is that, you know, they're, the big rituals have taken me to higher levels um, in, in my spiritual growth and my awakening. Um, but just doing the regular rituals every day um, and, you know, every week and every month have, has conditioned me so that I'm ready for those bigger rituals. That's, that's been, you know, my experience with it. Like we have our ritual of um, going down, jogging down to the beach and we do some yoga, um, sun salutations, and we uh, meditate at the beach. And that's a ritual that we do every day. And that helps, you know, just kind of really, I, it feels like it's almost loosening it, loosening me up so that I can do some of the bigger deeper rituals it's a beautiful example because like if we went down to the beach once and meditated you'd be like oh that's nice that was so lovely that was so memorable but the truth is is that like like meditation you get better at it the deeper you go the, the more frequent um you have that experience there's like a groove that gets created and it's a groove into the extraordinary mm -hmm. now this is the big distinction i want to make because um we all have rituals like brushing our teeth is a ritual, making like, I have a, a, a morning smoothie that I make every morning. And, and it's like, a, those are mundane rituals, like how we put our shoes on. Um, but what makes a ritual a sacred ritual? So there's mundane rituals and there's sacred rituals. And it's going out of the ordinary into the now extraordinary and coming into partnership with magic, mm -hmm. with mystery, mm -hmm. with like, I don't know what's gonna come through. Mm -hmm. You know, and in some ways, you know, our jogging down the beach is kind of a mundane thing because we do it every day, but then we take a moment to participate with mystery by doing the meditation, you mm -hmm. know, and seeing Ooh, what's going to come through today. And one of the, um, really, as we talk about it as these mundane relationships and the magical, I'm sorry, the mundane uh, rituals and the magical rituals, that doing these mundane rituals um, and then doing the magical rituals um, our, my hope is that we actually bring um, our lives to where those magical rituals become the mundane, yeah. uh, where we're doing that all the time, where we, we, we up-level ourselves. And, that, and that's the experience that I've had this past, yeah. past year, especially, but you know, for several years. But this past year, um, I did some very deep ritual with ISTA um, in the practitioner training that that really up leveled me, and, and it was you know it was obvious that it, that it was a really breakthrough mm -hmm. you know ritual that was doing that, but it was because because I had done the, the the preparation for it, and then once I had done that ritual, that type of feeling and and the the breakthrough part actually became you know part of my life. Mm -hmm. it, it was almost like I had kind of up leveled myself to a like a new level of 
it felt like a like a level of euphoria, um, just like an ongoing euphoria, mm-hmm. and that came through ritual. And yeah, beautiful. The word I want to drop in here because what we're talking about is encompassed by the word cultivation. So we're cultivating, you know, this magic every time we do ritual it's like you're tending to this garden and pretty soon (laughs) the magic just grows (laughs) and it takes less and less cultivation but it's beautiful to have these practices Mm -hmm. and we um you know we're mentioning some that we have but through the years we've you know played with different rituals at different times and this is so important too is is that when a ritual starts to get so routine like if you're like i have a a fire ritual you know we did when we were in india india the whole time we were in india on our tantric pilgrimage we did every day fire ritual fire ritual fire ritual and if we and it was extraordinary there but there comes a point at which you're like oh another fire ritual Mm -hmm. it it doesn't even have the same magic yeah i'd I'd start sleeping through parts i'd be falling asleep (laughs) during the agni fire rituals and and um and there's a um and an aliveness that you want, especially in relationship, you want to keep it alive. So you say, okay, well, let's move into now doing pujas to the Chandra, to the moon. You know, we were doing moon rituals and, you know, and then you come back. Sometimes you, you circle around, you're like, wow, this is landing in a whole different way. Um, but I do encourage that rituals be maintained, not just like, oh, I'm going to do it once, 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 because then it's like this colorful buffet, flavorful, but there's no mastery. There's no mm-hmm. cultivation. Yeah, just like yoga, you know, obviously you can do yoga once or you can do yoga on a regular basis and it's going to take you to new, you know, new levels yeah. with it. If, if that's a And this is relationship yoga. So oh. doing the rituals together actually creates um, a deep sense of... Uh, I mean, there's so many benefits, but I will say this is the why. Because those of, those of you who don't have a regular practice might be like, why, why am I going to spend, you know, invest mm-hmm. this much energy into it? Um, and I would say the why in partnership is that you start breaking out of the projections and um, where re- relationship gets stale and old and or um, actually doesn't allow us to grow is that we think we know each other partners uh get so used to each other they get comfortable and they just think oh yeah yeah i know them i know them so well it's comfortable like an old shoe and a ritual take like it kind of crumbles down the identity and it's like now i get to see you at the soul level Mm -hmm. absolutely and and there's another part of it too Uh, you know we we've done a lot of ritual in our life just because it's it's you know, we met in a ritual, we've, you know, been involved in the Tantra community um, and done lots and lots of rituals, you know, over, over time. And the one thing that, um, that I keep, you know, coming back to is the harmony that we achieved in this past couple of years, um, as we, we, we were kind of blindsided by it in a way because we hadn't had so much harmony. But then when we look back, why is this harmony happening? it pointed right back to the rituals. It was all of, you know, the rituals that we were doing and we could actually look back to the specific ones, you know, training about, you know, about being in a better state um, and then going into these deep meditations and the work, you know, the work that we were doing with ISTA, work with Tony Robbins, you know, all these different types of rituals. Um, But it was those rituals that brought us to that, you know, to that place where we were able to have that harmony. so harmony is one of the other things that can come from the ritual. Yeah, and when when you, um, and so I, you know, now that you have the reason why you want to do this, you may be asking how. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think we described the what, right? That it's this extraordinary experience that's a, a step out of the mundane, mm-hmm. um, and then the there's i want to address the when and the where and then we're going to do a what which is an in-depth um share Mm -hmm. about a particular ritual that we've designed that we want to initiate you into yeah and and not that this is the only ritual um we there are lots of rituals that you do you know already you know we do dream interpretation we do a lot of sex magic um we do a lot of um a lot of different uh ones you know, love letters, um, 
you know, visioning together. You know, we do a lot of ritual of, of even doing our mundane planning for the week. We do that every week and it's a ritual. Um, and, you know, these are the, what we're talking about, you know, about those rituals that, that are focused, all of the rituals that we are doing, um, I try to put them into the context of making our relationship stronger and keep that as the, you know, visioning what our relationship is looking like, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that vision of a relationship. Yeah, so as Michael lists, you know, various kinds of rituals, you may want to take an inventory and say, hmm, what are the rituals that I already do? Mm -hmm. um, because some of those are like gorgeous. I was just <laughs> having a conversation with, um, with uh, Kirsten and Jonathan, who will, um, they were saying like, the day I met them, he was telling me what a great foot rubbing ritual they have. And that was years ago. And they still do that. And, and it's a beautiful thing that they're, that they're doing. You want to look at, well, what do we do really well? And then what would, what else, you know, hopefully you'll get ideas. Um, and one of the beautiful things about working with communities that we can actually cross pollinate and um, share different and synergize because Michael and I are always learning from other couples, mm -hmm. like what works. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the simplest thing, you know, we, we take baths together. Um, most, most people do take occasional baths, but the act of just taking rose petals and putting them in the water takes the bath to another level. And, mm -hmm. and you know that whether it's bath salts or, or candles that there's a bath, but then there's a bath. <laughs> And um, that distinction is uh, what is actually the, the first step in the seven steps that we're going to go through. It's called set and setting. And before I go into those seven steps, I want to say, I want to kind of frame the call um, to be really clear. We're going to share with you a deep ritual after which we're going to... Um, take any questions that you have. Um, so we'll open the line to see what would help you feel more equipped so that you can be fully um, ready to do this ritual yourself or with your partner this week. Um, and the idea would be that I think in one week, next mm -hmm. week, is it next week? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I believe it's next Sunday. We'll double check, double check that. <laughs> next Sunday, yeah, we're going to have a, another call. Yeah, I remember why. We wanted to do it in short order because what will happen is if we give you a transmission and you wait two weeks to do it, like it is very powerful to do things right when you get the transmission. Like Michael and I have been doing this for years. It's in our bodies. It's in our cells. So we give it to you. And if you take it and do it right away in partnership, you're going to feel a lot more... Um, of the aliveness than if you wait and forget, like what were they talking about? So we really encourage you to do this right away. Mm -hmm. um, and then the following week, we'll um, give you that. Uh, we'll kind of unpack what you, you know, what happened in your ritual, um, any questions you had about it, and we can help kind of guide. And hear stories. I mean, it's really yeah. exciting to hear when people have breakthroughs or insights and to share those. Um, so this is the accountability part, which mm -hmm. is where we hold you to hold your feet to the fire, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is, which is going to be the model of how we uh, run the deep, the deep dive for the year. You know, each month we'll have a subject like rituals and we'll, we'll unpack it and work, work with it. And then the, the homework or home play, as we call it, will be, you know, to do that work. And then, you know, the next week or, you know, week or two, we'll have that that call and everybody will come back together, share what happened with them. Yeah. Um, and we'll do that for the entire year. And we're going to be able to go really, really deep. And we'll, we'll also be actually doing ritual. Most of the, the year is actually going to be based on rituals yeah. as, as well. So imagine, you know, what would be possible in your current partnership? If you have a beloved for you to break out of the mundane way of assuming that you know each other, and go each month deeper into an area, you know, of your relating that would just, um, you know, it's, it's just this take it higher and higher until a year from now you go, uh, this is a whole different relationship because we're no longer meeting at the level of personality and karma and, you know, veils of past pain, but instead we're meeting at the level of soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One one little uh, uh, catalyst that I use in my life is the question: If I had a magic wand, 
and I could make the relationship just the way I wanted it to be in a year. If we, if I could imagine, you know, how would the relationship be? You know, what would it be like? How would I feel? Um, especially, um, you know, how would I feel around the relationship? And then all the other, you know, details. Um, and, you know, using that, that prompts me, you know, to, you know, think about it. So you might want to think of that as well. You know, what, what would that, what would that look like? And then, and then leave yourself open to the, the ritual is going to be actually an opening up to the, to the void or to spirit so that spirit can kind of guide you. So you don't have to like do all the, this inventory yourself. It's, it's just leaving yourself open to the, uh, you know, leaving yourself open to what spirit is, is guiding you. Um, so that's um, an example. The magic wand is kind of like a, um, a mini ritual, a visioning, a mini visioning. We're going to take you into the deeper one. Um, and this, qu the question that you may have uh, for those of you that are watching this that aren't in partnership, um, this same ritual can be used as a solo journey to help you vision your beloved who's on their way. So I've, I've led people through this as a soulmate um, seeking practice as a like, you know, lighting up the beacon to really attract your partner. Um, and so I want to offer that because I know this recording is very valuable for different people who um, aren't going to be in the class. Um, but for those of you who are like, we want to invite you, we're going to be talking specifically about partners doing this together. So you just have to adapt it a little bit. Um, but our focus for this course is really about um, you know, deep life partnership and how to make that life extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So, and um, when we talk about relationship, we, we always, we know that, that how good your relationship is, you know, with another is, is always going to be a reflection of how good your relationship is within yourself, you know, around, um, you know, self-talk, you know, just how you're feeling within, within yourself. Um, and that's, and that's really what Kamala Devi's pointing at here that you know, the work, you know, anytime we're doing this, this type of work, which is, you know, kind of deep shamanic meditation, it's, it really is solo work. You know, you're not, you, you can't be within that person. Um, although there have been experiences where we've, we've tied together in the shamanic, shamanic realms. And, you know, we're hoping that you'll be able to get to that, you know, that place as well, where you'll actually, you may even meet meet each other within that shamanic shamanic yeah, when, when you do it together there's a kind of a merging that's possible mm -hmm. so let's go through the um steps yeah some of the steps okay so remember the bathtub example <laughs> um this step number one is about creating the set and the setting for ritual now set and setting um is also a term, you know, used by psychedelic explorers when they're exploring like, you know, uh, realms of consciousness. Because what we know is that in order for the body to like really relax and or, you know, to feel safe and to have a good journey, that you need a degree of the external reality being like a safe reflection of for, for you to go on an internal journey. And what that may look like is um you know making sure that you've like turned off your phone or or you've got a block of time you block time off you can actually um uh set music like candles some incense and some of that's just to elevate the senses so you can actually bring out you know it's, it's nice to to wear um ritual garb you know sometimes wearing uh a, of clothing that will make you feel beautiful, whatever little thing, whether it's, you know, bringing fresh flowers into the, into the space, what, what will elevate your spirit? And it's, I mean, this is so well known. I mean, if you go into any church, you've got the stained glass windows, you've got the sounds of the Gregorian monks chanting, <laughs> depending on your, <laughs> your denomination, of course. But, but we know that that elevates us to the level of spirit so you want to do that even if it's a simple um just turning on pandora you know <laughs> and lighting lighting a candle you know a lot of a lot of the ritual um 
you know, there's a lot of magic within fire mm -hmm. in the realm of fire and just lighting, you know, a single candle can help, help to move that. You bring that up, not just the five senses, but the elements as well. So you want to have, you know, fire, water, air mm -hmm. by the incense and, and, and maybe a crystal or stone. So you, so really kind of calling in the energies physically with physical representation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then number two, um, do you want to go through invocation or we'll just, we'll just rally. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, so let's, let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to do a little version of it okay. right, right now. Is that. Yeah. And so if you're, here's the deal for those of you that are watching this, like if you're the kind of person that needs to take notes, take notes. If you're the kind of person that's embodied, like let, let's go on this little journey together and let yourself go. You know that it's recorded. You can watch yeah. it again another time. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is it, it is recorded. If you can let yourself go as much as possible, if you're driving a car, you don't want to let yourself go. <laughs> um, so, um, but so um, this is something that you can do, you know, yourself or you can do for others. I lead this, this journey a lot of times for, um, for groups. You'll want to get yourself uh, sitting in a super comfortable place or even lying down. Um, one of those mm -hmm. two, if, if you're going to fall asleep, um, that's okay, um, but you may miss some of the stuff if we if we can't bring you back out uh, mm -hmm. afterwards. Um, but but you know that's okay as well. So take yourself into a deep deep breath. Yeah, and exhale. Hail with a little bit of sound. Ah. Ah. And I'm going to go ahead and open us with an, with an om as well. Great. Deep breath. Now you feel yourself settled on the earth. You can feel the, the solidness of the earth beneath you. And we're going to go down into the earth. So you can enter the earth, you know, through the roots of a tree, um, through a hot spring, through any type of uh, place that is an opening within your, within your mind and your spirit and you're dropping down now into the earth. Through the breath, just breathing down. <sighs> and you're going down, down, down through the earth, deeper, deeper, deeper. Now, as we deepen, it opens up and the earth opens up into a cavern that is a garden. Look around in this garden and notice the things that are there, the plants. Notice the, the earth and the soil. The ground covering. And look around and notice something that you didn't notice before. And you'll notice that there is a path of water going through this garden. It's a small creek or a brook or a small river. See its color. And listen to the river, hear the rushing aliveness in the water. Notice something that you didn't notice in this, in this river. Now notice that there's a bridge that crosses 
your small creek or river. Notice what the bridge is made of, what color it is, any patterns or designs on the bridge. Notice something that you hadn't noticed about your bridge. Hmm. So your relationship is coming on to this bridge. This is the bridge that takes your higher self to the to the to meet your beloved it crosses over to their garden to their internal reality and what's possible as souls so allow yourself to step onto this bridge as the greatest lover the most sensitive and fulfilled and alive lover you step on and walk towards your beloved who's walking towards you. Um, put your hands out and take the hand of your beloved. Take both hands. Feel the warmth. Feel the texture of your beloved's hands. Let yourself gaze into their eyes. Let your hearts open as they beat together. And feel what it feels like to be in union with this partner and have that union be the union that you envision. Mm -hmm. Like the perfect union Feel, feel what it feels like. Standing here together, looking out from this bridge, you can actually see, you can be guided into what's possible in all areas of your relationship. So it's as if it's being revealed to you here. Let yourself you know, taste it and smell what it's like to be fully in perfect love and perfect trust in partnership. And listen to, there may be words that come, you know, your, that may come from your partner, it may come from above. Just notice what you hear Notice something that you hadn't heard before. Like maybe it's a mantra or some guidance. Doesn't have to make sense. Maybe it's something in nature. Maybe it's the animals. And as your hearts are open and listening together on this bridge, I'm gonna invite you to, to receive an upgrade in every dimension. So allow yourself first at the physical dimension to feel what would your body be like if you were absolutely sexually and physically and chemically fulfilled? Who would you be? And then the emotional dimension. What if you and your partner met with all your emotions, you met each other and, and accepted and supported each other to move through and really resonated emotionally. 
Feel what that feels like deep within you. Notice a feeling that you hadn't noticed before. Lift yourself into the intellectual and, and conceptual realm. Allow yourself to be stimulated by the mind of the beloved. Like your mind to their mind, the ideas, the synergy, the musing. What if intellectually you were really stimulated and met? Who would you have to be? And they, it might be a totally different kind of mind and you want that. You want that, that uniqueness, that difference, and you're appreciating you know, that your mind is met by the contrast of another's. And just leave yourself open to the messages that are coming to you. The feelings, the visions, the beautiful visions, mm -hmm. the beautiful sound of the, the brook running beneath your feet, and the sounds that are coming to you, the images of sound, and the feelings, the feelings of warmth, the feelings of a breeze, feel what your body is feeling. And moving into the spiritual realm that has, like, that's way beyond words, has a quality that's dreamlike and even absolute. And feel that deep partnership in the center of your soul. And know that in this garden, you're surrounded by spirit guides, guides of animals, guides of spirit and of nature that are around you. They're protecting you and they're giving you messages. So we allow for all the other dimensions to also be upgraded. So take a, a few breaths and a moment to feel who you would be if on every level of existence, on every plane, you were aligned with your soul, your purpose, your feeling met in partnership. What's possible for you as a lover, as a beloved? And just open yourself up to the messages that are coming in. You're opening channels within you that will remain, remain in communication with these different dimensions. And you're gathering all of that energy and insight. When you, when you do this later, you can go even deeper into the listening and take your time. But right now, we're just transmitting the possibility and introducing you to this bridge in this moment with your beloved. So I want you to thank your beloved, knowing that you're going to come back here, that the two of you can always meet on this bridge. And you embrace your partner and really melt with them into a, a deep hug on the bridge, sealing in a soul contract to come here to revision, to see each other in each other's highest. <sighs> and take your time after blessing them on their way back to their garden to slowly walk back over the bridge Take your time gathering your energy, 
really embodying this upgrade as you come back into your own garden and you notice the colors are even brighter. Mm. Any final messages you want to gather in the, in the wisdom of the garden as you come back through your point of origin, maybe that's through the roots of a tree. And you're rising up now out of the garden, back up through the mantle of the earth, through the earth and up, back up. And as you come out of that entry place, back onto the earth, you feel yourself settling down and sitting down on the earth or lying down on the earth. Mm -hmm. And you feel the solid grounding of the earth beneath you. Coming deeply into your body now, your fingers and your toes. Mm -hmm. And bringing this upgrade with you, like feeling in your body that you have access to what's possible as you gently open your eyes on an exhalation. Mm -hmm. <sighs> The next step for you, you know, is you want to move slow as if coming out of a dream, but you want to get your journal, you know, not when you do this ritual after the visualization, you'll want 10 minutes. You want to set the alarm and just write for 10 minutes what, what you saw, what you felt, even what's coming through you as you write. Um, it's a, it's a very valuable, um, way to kind of to gather your own experience of your garden and your wisdom and meanwhile your partner's journaling and doing their own experience so you know maybe that after the meditation the two of you are setting you're writing it's very tempting to talk <laughs> or to share but instead it's like let me come in through my through my crystallization of those gifts what did i hear you know what was valuable for me what did i see that i didn't expect and then after you do like a, a recall, like a dream recall of the vision, mm -hmm. um, Michael, I might ask him to, to read first or I might read first, but we would read our relationship journey, vision, ideas to each other. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking for, what we're listening for, because sometimes he'll have words and messages that were for me. It's like, ooh, that's my guide talking through him. <laughs> and sometimes he has words and visions that are completely uniquely his. And they're like, that's not really necessarily resonant. And that's okay because we're individuals in this partnership. Mm -hmm. And then the gold is when we say, ooh, there's overlap. Like he's saying something and I'm a yes to that or I wrote the same thing and that's really core to what I saw. Um, and so after reading to each other, the final step is to co-create like a relationship vision, you know, to actually write together, you know, here's our values or here's our new purpose or here's something that's, that's um, aligned for us or a, a mantra that we're going to share. So it's a shared vision, the final step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, so putting, putting that together and then we'll, um, we'll talk about it again on Sunday. We'd love to hear your questions. You know, you can send them in on, on mess messenger before we, to before us. we go there let's um check in about questions here now okay yeah let's hear what would help you so that you feel really equipped to do this on your own um you know if there's any confusion or questions let's clear about, that that about how to do it so that you're ready and i'd love to um take it off mute um but let's why don't you while we're asking people, mm -hmm. um, why don't you review the seven steps so that they can yeah. write this down? Yeah. So set, set and, and setting. So find a time where you have a you know, block of time, probably about an hour, you know, 45 minutes minimum, but um, you know, something like that, where it's gonna be totally un, uninterrupted. You find a, a space, you know, make that space um, you know, as beautiful as you can, you know, a little different from the mundane, mm -hmm. lighting a candle, all of those other elements. Um, bridge, uh, and then you're going to go um, into an invocation. That's the the oming 
Um, and your invocation could look like a prayer. It could be intention setting. It can be like invocations can look very, very different. Um, we happen to find that OM is more, is, is universal. So we, we used it here because it's like the universe is chanting through us um, just this resonant frequency of love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, chanting is very, um, some, some people whose throat chakras aren't open, that's very uncomfortable for people. So do what feels authentic for you. And this is really important. This is so key is this work has to be, um, it has to be aligned and congruent with who you are to be effective. It's not like, I'm going to do what they told me. Um, it's like, I need to do what feels like lights me up. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to go into the, um, into the underworld um, and into the garden that's uh, that's beneath. And as you do that, you can you can either um, do it. You can guide one of you can guide it. It's probably better to just do it yourself um, if you know you're together and just know the the exercises from you know the way I describe them and the way we describe them, and then just let let it happen in your mind. Um, I even do that. You know, sometimes in my regular meditations, I'll go into the garden and use that as a as a place. You know, within mm -hmm. my normal meditation, um, and you'll just do that do that together. Um, as far as coming out of it, um, you might have an agreed upon time. You can even set a timer um, if you want to want to do that. You know, for when you guys are finishing, like maybe a twenty minute time or something, and then have a, a yeah. gentle timer, not a not a loud. The first time you do one. it. Um, 10 minutes is, is fine. If you're an avid meditator, 20 minutes is recommended. Um, and yeah, setting that timer together is helpful because it's like, we know we're com we're coming, we're doing this together. So it's, it's more concentrated and potent. Um, sometimes people will be like, Oh, I'll let my partner journey and, and I come out of it. And it's like, no, you, you kind of go in together. You come out together. Yeah. You want to be doing it together. If, if it is a together one, if you're doing it solo, obviously you don't have to set a timer if you know yourself and your how you can come out of your own meditation. So we have invocation, the bridge visualization. Number three is this, I want to, I want to emphasize it's not three, it's four. Um, the, that there's a moment of really listening. We didn't add that because we wanted to, um, we want, we wanted to give you the, the mini transmission, but when you're actually doing it, once the visualization, you want to let yourself go into um, the mystery. And so what we, that point of, hey, I'm getting this upgrade, there's a deeper period of really allowing for um, a meditation. We, we did the visualization, you've got to do the meditation. Yeah, and, that, and that's right after. So basically the, where we're speaking, we have all of this speaking part and you're in the garden, then just stay there in the garden for a while without, without speaking a lot, a lot of talk and really you know, listen for those yeah. things. And that could be you know, 10 minutes of the process or yeah. even so more. Take your time in the garden, take your time on the bridge, um, then come out and journal, um, 10 minutes is recommended. Mm -hmm. And then read to each other is six. Number seven is co-creating a shared relationship vision. And number eight is sending us information about it so that we can share with you. Um, yeah, let us know how it went. Yeah, or show up to our call. Yeah, and or both. Um, we'd love to get that in, that stuff you know ahead of time so that we can do kind we, of do get an idea. Do we have any questions on the call now about this or? Um, Should they send it send it in with a a, a message? Yeah. There? So I'm I'm you know expecting that the people on the call are following us, and those mm -hmm. of you who are watching a recorder recording send us a, a question. We're happy to answer that. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about you know I think we've shared what our fourth and final upgrade uh, will look like next week. Um, but I th that's the Q and A, yeah, Q and A call kind of over overview of what what happened this week in your homework. But it's not just hey, we're holding you accountable. Come, you know, it's also in an opportunity for community um, and for synergy. So I'm going to invite a deeper group discussion next week, and that will help us get a sense of like, hey, it's not just the Kamala Devi Michael show. Because trust me, we've already had our show. We don't need another one. We, what we need, um, some 
like synergy. Like I, like I said, I learn from other couples. So, um, we'll be hearing more from you. Um, and I also invite you to come with your, um, relationship visions. Um, Michael and I shared already our vision of peace in the world through partnership and harmony in, in relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So bringing that harmony into, into world peace. Um, I truly believe this work that we're doing is peace work. Like it, it may, might feel like personal growth and might feel like relationship work, but I do think that these relationship visions can change the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so bring it, you know, and because sometimes it's like, they feel so private and so personal, well, just coming into a community where you can read it and speak it yeah. out loud can actually start to change your sense of purpose in the partnership. It, it, it's, it's alchemical to have to be witnessed by conscious individuals mm -hmm. around your relationship. I cannot, it's so simple, but so profound. I can't, um, begin to tell you until you have that experience. <laughs> yeah. Just, just like, you know, uh, people coming out of the closet, you know, people that are gay or polyamorous or whatever, you know, coming out of the closet is such a huge, huge spiritual awakening for them. This is the same, you know, being able to actually speak and bring out your inner, you know, inner feelings and thoughts about your relationship is, is it coming out? It's, it's a coming out of the closet process that will supercharge you. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's really what we're looking at in this whole year actually is, is being able to pull those messages out from inside the relationship, um, especially from ourselves, but then within the relationship, you know, um, as well. Um, yeah, part of, I mean, it, it, it's a sort of abstract for people. They're like peace on earth from harmony and partnership, like that, that link seems like a big link, like a, a, a stretch. A yeah. But really what we're saying is part of the problem on the earth, part of the reason the planet is in collapse is because of the privatization of love. Like love is this private matter that happens behind closed doors. And we're like saying that's what's broken. <laughs> this is actually something that needs to be communal <laughs> shared that needs to be understood at a much wider mm -hmm. uh, tribal and, and global level. So that's how this work is peace work. Mm -hmm. And, and we need you mm -hmm. for, to be our cauldron, you know, to create that next synergy. You know, we have, I have myself, we have our relationship together, but what we want to do is we want to now you know, build that into, into this family. It's really a family group that has the same values in the, the <laughs> Oh yeah. Kabuki always wants to say hi. Anytime we're doing ritual, he always shows up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think we're wrapping up our final um, piece is an invitation for those of you who are, you know, in partnership and have been resonating with this. Um, in like, it's, it's not just like a call to action for us or not just like a, you know, Hey, we're, we, we're trying to enroll you in this call. Although we are, we would love to get our tribe together to do this deep dive. Um, it's actually a, mm, um, it's the first time Michael and I are doing this and we're really clear that this is part of what we're here on earth to do. And this is really like a beta test for us. Um, it, we're piloting our deep dive this year. We want to take 12 extraordinary couples into this journey and to see, because it's a great laboratory and it's a great mystery, what can we create if these 24 souls get really upgraded, activated, um, in love? How can we bring more love into the world? And um, those are people who we consider peers. You know, we're obviously masters and mentors in this field and we're looking for those who want to work at that really high level and we're really magnetizing some amazing people the yeah. people that are already signed up are you know very high level you know journeyers in you know in the shamanic realms um, in, in various already. in various realms because we mm -hmm. really are this is a multi-dimensional um practice and so if you're feeling that that is resonant let's have a conversation and that's a discovery call in which, you know, we'll go over 
um, for like a, just a half hour, like what your relationship intention is. And then we're going to hear from you around um, like what your goal would be for the year. Um, we'll talk about the investment, you know, not just the financial, but the, the time investment, which is, you know, how, the, how it's structured. And there's also private sessions that are involved in the, in the mastermind package. And we'll go over those details on the call. Um, but we're what, really looking forward to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and for people that hadn't heard our message before, um, it is for people that are at least a couple or, or a poly family. Uh, it's not for individuals. I know we talked about you know, doing the, the visioning work that we just did can be done individually, no problem. But um, the deep dive for the year is for people that are committed and you know, in, the, in a relationship already. And, and for, for those of you that are listening now, like who knows, maybe you'll attract your perfect soulmate and come join us next year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, beautiful. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're complete. It's been really lovely spending a Sunday morning with you. We're looking forward to more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, get in touch with us uh, via message. You know, just send us a private message if you want to have that discovery call with us. And we're have a beautiful uh, weekend. Kabuki says, meow. says goodbye and meow too. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Mm. Blessings. Blessings.